Hello my besties, good afternoon and God bless you all. Today is another vlog, another sleigh, and another day in paradise. Sounded like we are here in Hawaii. Well, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Just kidding, kidding, kidding. Okay, so we're going to use this Gucci primer and Valentino, very Valentino. Our topic for today is Alice. Alice who's set, set it on a riverbank. I know I'm sunny day. Okay, drowsily reading over her sister's shoulder. Alright, so when she catches the sight of a white rabbit in a waistcoat running by her, the white rabbit pulls out a pocket watch, okay, and then exclaims, that he is late and pops down a rabbit hole. Whoa. So Alice followed the white rabbit. No, not the white rabbit candy. Okay. Down the hole. What kind of hole? I don't know. Maybe a manhole hole. <laughs> it comes upon a great, great hallway lined with doors. Ooh, she finds a small door that she opens using a key she discovers on a nearby table through the door <laughs> i tasted the primer yeah. through the door she sees a beautiful beautiful garden and alice begins to cry when she realizes she cannot fit through the door she finds a bottle mark drink me and downs the contents. All right. She shrinks down to the right size, okay, to enter the door, but cannot enter since she has left the key on the tabletop after, oh, I mean after, above her head. So Alice now discovers, you know, a cake mark eat me which causes her to grow to an inordinately large height still unable to enter the garden so alice begins to cry again and again and her giant tears form a pool at her feet as she cries she always cries. <laughs> Alice shrinks and falls into the pool of tears. Ooh. Then the pool of tears becomes a sea. And as she threads water, she meets a mouse. The mouse of Cinderella. The mouse accompanies Alice to the shore where a number of animals stand gathered on a bank. Oh, they're gonna get money from the ATM, eh? <laughs> Just kidding, kidding. So after a caucus race, Alice scares the animals away with tales of her cat, Meow Meow, Dinah, and finds herself alone again oh my god and alice meets meets not met meets the white rug again who mistakes her for a servant okay and sends her off to fetch his things whoa so while in the white rabbit's house alice drinks the unmarked bottle of liquid and grows to the size of the room whoa so the rabbit returns to his house fuming at the now giant alice oh wow now now but she swats him and his servants away with her giant 
Hmm. The animals outside try to get her out of the house, okay? But throwing rocks at her. All right. So, with inexplicably transform into cakes when they land in the house. I need Botox on here. Soon I'll get Botox. All right. So, Alice eats one of the cakes, which causes her to shrink to a small size, a small size, and then she wanders off into the forest, where she meets a caterpillar sitting on a mushroom and smoking a hookah, a water pipe. Okay. That giant caterpillar, the caterpillar and Alice get into an argument. Alright. But before the caterpillar crawls away in disgust, he tells Alice that different parts of the mushroom will make her grow and shrink. Whew. So Alice tastes a part of the mushroom oh my goodness and her neck stretches above the trees her neck like a giraffe a pig sees her and attacks deeming her a serpent hungry for pigeon eggs whoa all right all right my besties so Alice eats another part of the mushroom. So this is the bye bye under eye eat cosmetics and shrinks down to a normal height. There you go. Alright. Alright, busy. So she wanders until she comes across the house. The house of an Englishman. The house of the Duchess. Duchess of TSMA. <laughs> All right, my besties. So, so, she enters and finds the Duchess. All right. A squealing, who is nursing a squealing baby. As well as a grinding Cheshire cat. And a cook who tosses massive amounts of pepper into a cauldron of soup. The Duchess behaves rudely to Alice and then departs to prepare for a crochet, croquet, croquet, a croquet, whatever KK, game with the Queen, the Queen of Hearts. As she leaves the Duchess' hands, Alice, the baby, the Duchess handed the baby to Alice. Which Alice discovers is a pig. Alice lets the pig go and it enters the forest where she meets the Cheshire cat. The meow meow again. The, the cat okay, explains to Alice that everyone in Wonderland is mad, including Alice herself. Everyone is mad. So the Cheshire cat gives directions to the March Hare's house and fades away to nothing. Nothing hill but a floating green. A floating green. Alright. Alright. So if you like this video, please don't forget to subscribe like share comment whatever subscribe so alice travels to the march hare's house to find the march hare the mad hatter and the dormouse having tea together oh treated rudely by all three alice stands by the tea party uninvited Uninvited. 
She learns that they have wrong time and are trapped in a perpetual tea time. After now a final of this courtesy, you know, Alice leaves the and journeys through the what so called forest. She finds a tree with a door in its side and travels through it, through it, okay, to find herself back in the great hall. Then she takes the key and uses the mushroom. The mushroom to shrink down and enter the what so called the garden. <laughs> Alright, my besties, if you like my humor, please like the video, okay? <laughs> okay, after saving several gardeners, okay, from the temple of the Queen of Hearts. Alice joins the Queen of Hearts in a strange game of croquet or croquet. 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 Whatever. The croquet or crochet or croquet cool ground is hilly and mullets and balls are live flamingos and hedgehogs and the queen tears about frantically calling for the other players execution whoa amidst this madness Alice bumps into the meow Cheshire cat again and asks her how she's doing she's doing the king of hearts interrupts their conversation alright and attempts to bully the cat. He said, Meow, meow, why are you here? Impudently dismisses the king. The king takes offense and arranges, arranges for the Cheshire cat's execution. Whoa, but since the cat is now only a head, Floating in mid-air. <sighs> no one can agree on how to behead it. Why are you going to behead a cat that's already beheaded? So the Duchess approaches Alice and attempts to befriend her. Alright. Alright, so but the Duchess makes Alice feel uneasy. Uneasy made her easy. Uneasy. So the Queen of Hearts chases the Duchess off and tells Alice that she must visit the Monk Turtle to hear his story. But uh, they don't know that I'm the turtle. Okay. I am told telling that story now. So the Queen of Hearts sends Alice with a Gryphon as her escort to meet the Muck Turtle. So the Alice, I the Alice, Alice shares her strange experiences, experiences with the Muck Turtle and the Gryphon who listens sympathetically and comment. On the strangeness of her adventures. Oh, that was quite so strange. And after listening to the Mock Turtle story, guess what? They heard an announcement that a trial is about to begin. A trial is about to begin. Oh, wow, man. Lots of drama and the gryphon begins. I mean brings Alice back to the crochet clan ground. What's happening with my tongue? So the nerve of hearts try stands trial, okay? For stealing the queen's tarts. Pop tarts. 
Yes, the food. Pop tarts. The king of hearts leads the proceedings. And various witnesses approach the stand to give evidence. Wow. Now, the mad hatter and the cook both give their testimony. But none of it makes any sense. You know why? Because they're acting as animals. The white rabbit acting as a herald. Herald, hark, the herald angel sing. Calls Alice to the witness stand. The king goes nowhere with this line of questioning. Probably is this, he's got diabetes, you know. But it takes encouragement when the white rabbit brought a white rabbit candy and provides this as a new evidence okay also in the form of a letter written by nerve knurv nerve or nerve <laughs> the letter turns out to be a poem 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 which the king interprets as an admission of guilt on the part of the nav a nav or nav whatever so Alice believes the note to be nonsense and protests the king's interpretation wow so the queen of hearts becomes furious with Alice and orders for the heading. But Alice grows to a huge size and knocks over the Queen's army of playing cards. She did that. <laughs> what the heck? And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden, Alice finds herself awake on her sister's lap back at the river bank she tells her sister about her dream and goes inside for a tea as her sister ponders Alice adventures wow that was quite an adventure I love it I love it some of the best teas what are the five lessons from Alice in Wonderland? Exhibition. Alright. But we do that, let's do this first. We are going to end. Wizard of Oz, Wizard of Oz. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Alright. Here. This is the Sweet Pink by Julius Bliss. Alright besties, let Alice guide your kids through some of life's most important life lessons. Alice has been enchanting audiences across the world for over 150 years. Wow, that's a lot of years, eh? Too much years. Since first darting down the rabbit hole in 90, I, I mean 1865's Alice Adventures. In Wonderland, the eponymous adventure has appeared in more than like 40 cinematic adaptations. So, yeah, Brady. My baby, Mika and Isaac and Brady. Alright, we the last as recent. As 2016. Hmm. That's before the pandemic. So it's no wonder that Alice continues to inspire with all versions of her story. Rhyming with applicable everyday wisdom in an advised way. Before Instagram, you know. Cornered affirmation market. You know what I'm saying. Alright, so let's add this down here. 
It's about tripping through the twisty linguistic amazing animation and iterations or iterations of Alice. We can learn some important lessons to bring back from Wonderland. Oh yeah. Alright, so let's just look at this. Always remember, risk has some rewards. Like for example, playing a lotto. If you don't risk a chance, okay, or playing, then you can win. So sure, crawling down a rabbit hole might be too big a risk in the real, real world. No, but her decision to follow the white rabbit leads to a magical journey. And she met the journeys faithfully. So it's not all smooth sailing. We are sailing. As she encounters obstacles, gets lost. And the Queen of Hearts is obsessed with taking her. Hmm. But by the time Alice wakes from Wonderland, she is armed with new experiences to help navigate real life. Wow, I like that actually. Alright, so add this down here, okay? Alright. Nice, you like it? So though, taking risks can be scary. Right, like crawling down a rabbit hole, standing still, you know, can be scarier. So, without taking a risk, all right, and challenging ourselves, we don't grow. As in, all right, let's do this. We will not grow if we don't take any risk. Alright, so we really shouldn't be doing this after all, you know. We haven't been invited and curiously often leads to trouble. But yeah. Right? So discover who you are. Discover your talents. Discover who you are. Alright, best this. Now, now, when the caterpillar asked Alice, Who are you? She could find a simple answer. Not just because she shifted sizes so much since falling down the rabbit hole. You know, but because, you know, Alice is unsure just who she is. Alrighty. So, while Alice's adventure, you know, might seem mad on the surface, I'm gonna use this Jeffree Star's Blue Blood. Its main goal is answering the caterpillar's question, okay, and figuring out the greatest puzzle of all. Who in the world am I? Who in the world am I? Who in the world am I? Life can also seem mad, okay? But by discovering who we are and accepting ourselves, this, my besties, assures a much smoother ride through our own life's journey. As in, as in, my besties. Alright, so I will add this blue. So also included on, okay, in Alice's Alice lessons advice, okay, she generally gave herself good advice, a very good advice, okay, though she very seldom followed it. You see, by learning to listen to our instincts, and be a little more objective 
objective with proof we can apply the wisdom we give to others to ourselves true so so true so so true my besties accept the differences of others you know all individuals are unique you know but i don't want to go among mad people Ali so much you know we're all mad here I'm mad you're mad so learning to accept who we are in life okay is one of life's great lessons my besties but so is like learning to accept the differences in others even if we're certain of who we are the people around us aren't always are not always going to be who we want them to be and that's fine that's fine we cannot control other people but we can control our own selves celebrating people's differences makes life more interesting it exposes us besties okay and amores to new perspectives and opens up new worlds just like wonderland so nice don't get stuck in the past don't get stuck in the past it's no use really of going back to yesterday it's done can't do anything much about it you know i was a different person then that's what alice tells the mock turtle in the grab moon all right while this shows just much you know just how much has happened you know to alice since her journey began so the writer lewis carroll imbues the line with multiple mu multiple meanings you know the alice adventures are about personal evolution personal evolution you know, and this lesson affirms that by reminding ourselves okay that we've grown since yesterday weeks ago okay a year ago or decades ago we've learned about closing old chapters past chapters in our lives we can write our future without like stewing on regrets without holding on to all of those mistakes we did in the past and disappointments okay we all encountered in the past Whew. wow i'm gonna put this in titled so st stand up for yourselves come okay, with this Stand up for yourselves. Hold your tongue, said the queen, turning purple. Wow. Hold your tongue. I won't, said Alice. Accepting other people is good. But sometimes people are just jerks okay it's sad but it's true the queen of hearts for example gets her excitement okay from belittling people berating people mocking people beating her subjects okay 
like below the belts including her own husband all right so that's really sad sad when precocious alice enters her kingdom the queen of the queen gets guillotines and rolling heads in her eyes just like bullies the world over you know but one of the most like important lessons for any young person to learn okay my best is, is not to let bullies get you down and always always stand up for yourself and there's nothing wrong with that there is nothing wrong with that especially if the bully is too much i get bullied all the time and i just have to stand stand up for myself okay by realizing that the queen of hearts minions are just a pack of cards alice changes her perspective to see that the aggressive people in her life really cannot hurt her if she changes her view all right that's it are you getting the point here never let the police get you down alice adventures in wonderland represents the child child's child's struggle to survive in the confusing world of adults so to understand our adult world alice has to overcome the open-mindedness okay that is characteristic for children characteristic for children all right let's add this Blue Monday. Another. Apparently, adults need rules to live by. So, do the Alice in Wonderland characters symbolize mental illness? What do you think, my besties? Okay, so this is the Blue Monday. Carol Lewis may have represented a number of mental illnesses, okay, in his iconic characters, which Disney and Tim Burton have brought to life. I think I'm gonna use this, my besties. Oh, this, not pink. Okay, so in Alice and Wonderland, the cat famously tells Alice, everyone's mad here. The cat said, everyone's mad here. After analyzing the peculiar characters you know, of Wonderland, fans have hypothesized that perhaps the cat was right. So maybe, you know, the classic characters like the Queen of Hearts. Okay, so just like that. You know the mad hatter and alice herself really do have mental illnesses alice in wonderland you know remains one of the most popular children's stories in existence in existence 
okay though the tim burton adaptation starring johnny depp did fare so well more well more than a century after it was written okay the story is still loved by audiences so it's possible okay that one of the secrets behind its success is that the characters though appearing outlandish display mental disorders you know that are relatable to many people in real life in the real world so that's a the theory that alice in wonderland is really a story about mental illness hold any weight and do other disney characters represent mental illness too uh, besties what do you think so just i go here uh, and now i'm going to add this undertaker it's kind of like black blue so what ill mental illness do the characters in alice wonderland have okay besties so let's all this So Alice in Wonderland features some of the most interesting characters in the history of literature. All right. So it is also open to interpretation. So it has been wild, widely theorized that the author of the classic work, you know, Lewis Carroll, drew inspiration from the treatment of mental illness in the 19th century. All right, let's see. This. So open culture reports that Carroll's uncle Robert Wilfred is Keffington Lutwidge was an officer of the Lunacy Commission. Lunacy Commission. Okay, the organization supervised mental health institutions, then called Luna Lunatic Asylums. Oh, I like this. I really, like, I really do. Mm. All right, so it is believed, besties, okay, that Carol used his knowledge of mental disorders and what was understood about them at the time to help mold his characters. There you go. Nice. I love it. We will add this ocean. Eyes. Ocean eyes. Okay, Alice in Wonderland characters seem to display according to the Odyssey online. Okay, Odyssey. The Mad Hatter, one of the most significant characters, displays post-traumatic stress disorder, PTS. Alright, so, at least in the Tim Burton adaptation of the story, where a character is John Depp, 
he suffers frequent like flashbacks you know of his village being attacked by the red riding hood i'm <laughs> just kidding <laughs> it's by the red queen which sparks angry angry outburst wow it's not good really you know so my best is just gonna add this white so the character also seems to show signs of bipolar disorder as he is you know at times gloomy and depressed you know before experiencing magic episode or manic episodes okay of excitement oh scary So the star is villain, the Red Queen, <sighs> appears to have narcissistic disorder or personality disorder. That's evidenced by the way she is completely self-absorbed and lacks empathy for others. Oh, narcissistic behavior. Okay, so her off with their head demands suggest paranoia paranoid personality disorder you know as she is convinced that everyone is out to get her wow there is paranoia right there So the queen characters of Tweedledee and Tweedledum may display shared psychotic disorder. You know, this is the Nyx. Nyx. Oh, wait a minute. Red line, liner, LA girl. Which Odyssey Online defines as a psychiatric syndrome in which you know symptoms of delusional belief and hallucinations are transmitted from one individual to another all right where is mom huh? i know i can't find it i'm just gonna use this so meanwhile my best is the white rabbit is believed by some of you know to symbolize generalized anxiety disorder as he is constantly like worried about being late so the rabbit also displays other common signs of disorder okay including twitching some restlessness and agitation It also appears that many of the Alice in Wonderland characters may show some, like, like sim it symbolizes mental illnesses, really. And it shows the signs and symptoms. But what about Alice herself? What do you think? What do you think, my wishes? what disorder does alice have in alice in wonderland alice seems to be struggling like primarily with an eating disorder this first like alluded to when when she arrives in wonderland and dramatically like changes size after eating and eating and eating drinking the foods okay 
and potions she can access you know like she shrinks she became she changes sizes like that and this may show how those with disordered eating may feel like they drastically change sizes <coughs> excuse me excuse me this is you know even after only consuming one thing like drinking that potion or eating this or that okay so when alice eats she doesn't simply take a small bite but rather binges and then regrets her actions afterwards you know it is really a sign of eating disorder no alice is stuck in a cycle in which she overeats and then has to like eat or drink even more to correct her initial consumption she basically relies on food to solve her problems so interestingly you know Lewis Carroll himself had a peculiar relationship with food. You know, he reportedly refused to eat lunch and, uh, and all his other meals were really small. When invited to dinners, he would bring his own food. You know, though Alice in Wonderland is the most, most famous example of a children's story containing you know, possible. possible symbolism of mental illness you know there have been other Disney characters also believed to represent different mental disorders too this is the it under eye by 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 under eye it cosmetics okay so you know for example Belle from Beauty and the Beast has been accusing of, of like displaying Stockholm Syndrome as she falls in love with the Beast okay who starts off their relationship really by holding her captive For example, the queen from Snow White. The queen from Snow White and the seven dwarfs. And surpassing, surprisingly, like being linked to narcissism. Since she has no regard for anyone's, you know, anyone else's, you know, feelings. And is super obsessed with her own image you know wonder fans find her to be one of the worst disney characters okay so lewis carol's alice in wonderland you know popular tales tales contain some hidden hidden truths about the human brain that are still inspiring you know inspiring neuroscientists to this day okay so
So David Robson takes a leap down the rabbit hole. hole. So Lewis Carroll was remarkably like, modest, okay, about his masterpiece. I'm going to use this contour. So the heroine, you know, spends an hour underground and meets various like birds, beasts, etc. No fairies, no fairies. And dude with speech, okay. He wrote in punch. The whole thing is a dream. But that I don't want to reveal the till the end. That's what it says. <sighs> Alright. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. It is now one and a half centuries. Okay. This is Burberry contour. Okay, since Alice first made that journey. And Carol's humble tale has inspired countless films, okay? Paintings, of course, and even a ballet. So what is less well known is the way it shaped our understanding, okay, of the brain. Not just Freudian like psychology and analytics analysis okay but also my best is modern neuroscience okay let's do this all right so memory language and consciousness you know long before we had the technology to map the brains, you know, work on their land. Okay, Carol was already charting its contours with his playful thought experiments. <coughs> Excuse me. So, it explores so, so many ideas, really. So many ideas. About whether there's like a continuous self, how we remember things you know, from the past, okay, and think about the future. So there's also a lot. There's a lot of richness, okay. A lot of richness there about like what we know about cognition, perception, cognitive science, okay, stuff like that. Can't find my contour brush. So my best is all of us can learn. Oh, I can use this. Yeah. All of us can learn something about ourselves from Alice in Wonderland. If only we look in the right way, the right perspective. Okay. As we approach, you know, the book's 150th anniversary, you know, the BBC feature follows her journey to brain's outer limits. You know what, I don't have other choice but to use this one, so I'm gonna use this one. The one that says, drink me. Okay, I'm gonna use this face palette bronzer and contour well i'll eat it said alice and if it makes me grow larger i can reach the key and if it makes me grow smaller i can creep under the door she said so either way or either way i'll get into the garden and she said i don't care which happens all right
In one of her first adventures, Alice finds a potion with drink me on its label. And that shrinks her to just 10 inches tall. And then a magic cake that has the opposite effect. She is now so, so big. So, so big. Her head hits the ceiling. Teens are among the most memorable of the book and business film adaptation. And they were among the first to grab the attention of the many. You know, they grabbed the attention of scientists. Scientists. Alright, so this is the. Contour. So in 1955, a psychiatrist called John Todd found that certain patients reported exactly the same feeling of opposite, you know, opening, opening, you know, opening out like a telescope. The disorder is known as Alice in Wonderland Syndrome. You know, and it seems to be the most common in children. You know, I have heard patients saying that things appear outside down. And even though mommy is on the other side of the room, she appeared next to her. This syndrome can be like pinned to abnormal activity in the parietal lobes, lobes, okay, which are responsible for spatial awareness, space, spatial awareness, you know, skewing the sense of perspective and the distance. Okay, best is, but despite the fact that it can be like disturbing, okay. So these fleeting illusions are generally harmless. The majority are unaffected and we just provide reassurance, you know, to the patients, okay? We prov provide reassurance that the patient is not crazy and the other people also experience these kinds of things. I really don't have that small brush right now. Is today the neuroscientists are trying to like evoke the illusion in healthy subjects, you know, which they think might shed light, okay, on the way we create our sense of self in the now and here, or the here and now. So this time, there could be no mistake about it. It was neither more nor less than a pig, and she felt that it would be quite absurd for her to carry it further. I really need a brush, a small brush. So Wonderland is full, it's full of shape-shifting. Full of shape shifting characters, including the grotesque Duchess and her crying baby. So, as Alice holds it in her hands, the baby's nose becomes more upturned, 
its eyes grow closer together and it starts grunting this is the contour i'm just gonna use this one so before she knows it the baby has turned into a pig as these dreams often contain objects morphing into new identities and this is characteristic is and this characteristic is one of the cleverest ways that alice adventures evoke the sleeping mind you know along with her strange sense the time is playing tricks on her so neuroscientist thinks that the phenomenon okay arises from the way the sleeping brain and does this consolidates our memories hold on let me do this real quick so. as it cements the recollections okay it draws links okay between different events to build the bigger bigger story of our own lives when like cross ref referencing you know a memory about a pig with an event about a baby for an instance so both become merged in a dream escape to so surreal effect all right For example, in Humpy Dumpy, my name is Alice, and it's a stupid name. It's a stupid enough name, Humpy Dumpy, interrupted impatiently. So what does that mean? Must a name mean something? So Alice asked doubt doubtfully. So Humpy Dumpy said, of course it must with a short laugh oh, oh, oh. my name means the shape i am and a good handsome shape it is that's what he said so with a name like yours you might be any shape almost So Alice adventures through the looking glass. You know, exploration, including some like playful forays into the nature of the speech. And best is it begins in the first chapter when Alice reads a poem called The Jabba. Jabberwocky, Jabberwocky, it was brittleleg, and the slithy thobes did gyre and gimbal in the web. The poem begins. The poem begins. is more intriguing you know, like some some of these events you know suspect that this you know this has been suspected to be like linguistic fossils that reflects human humankind's first utterances okay i'm gonna use probably this for contouring 
France encounter so the white queen and mental time travel hmm? it's a poor sort of like memory the only way it's backwards you know that was the queen's remark that was the queen's remark What sort of things do you remember best? Alice ventured to ask. So she said, Oh, things that happened the week after next. So she replied in a careless tone. Later on in her journey, Alice has lengthy discussions with the White Queen. You know, she is one of Carol, Carol's mo most baffling creations. Claiming to have a strange form of foresight. So in fact, her comments on memory are themselves, you know, surprisingly prescient. Prescient. You know, since the mid-2000s, okay? Neuroscientists started to realize that memory is not really about the past. It's about helping you act appropriately in the future. How you will act in the future. You know, some scientists or some instructors, you know, they try to illustrate the white queen you know you know the idea that you need to project yourself forward to work out the best course of action So one possibility okay is that we imagine the future by pulling apart our recollections okay and then piecing them together like a puzzle in a montage that might like represent a new idea that might represent a new scenario okay so my best is in this way hold on let me with this real quick. In this way, you know, memory and foresight use the same mental time travel. Okay. In the same areas of the what so called brain. So, for instance, you know. For example, people with damaged hypothalamus or some parts of the hypothalamus is damaged. So the injury means that they can't remember their past. They can't remember their past. But, you know, there's, they found out that there's, you know, they also struggle with like forward uh, thinking. So we ask them, you know, to imagine meeting a friend, okay, 
for example, next weekend. And they just couldn't do it. They just couldn't do it. They just couldn't do it. Okay, so the same, the same, the same was true when they were asked to like imagine a future visit. They can't. They can't do it. They just can't do it. A future visit to a suicide. They can't. They can't do it. They can't process that. So, in other words, unlike the white queen, they are stuck forever in eternal present. They can't really imagine things. You know? They can't do that. You know. So, let's do this kiss. This is a blue liner. We need the other one. This is the next epic wear. So, can you think? impossible thoughts my besties so Alice said there's no use trying one can't believe impossible things that's what she said The queen said, I dare say you haven't had much practice. When I was your age, I always did it for like half an hour a day. That's what she said. Oh my goodness, I need to fix that. Oh, I like that. So cute. Not me cute, but this one. <laughs> so the queen said, Why sometimes I've believed as many as six impossible things before breakfast? That's what the queen said. So continuing her exploration you know, of human imagination. I really like this one. I just have to make it perfect, okay? So the queen extols the virtues of thinking about the impossible. You know, the passage speaks to Gopnik, okay? Who first read Alice? Okay, I think this is ready. When she was three years old,
and she was three years when she was three years old and now spends her career studying how we build our imaginations and then she has fun for instance the children who play pretend and practice believing the impossible you know, tend to develop more advanced cognition So they are better at understanding hypothetical thinking, you know, for instance. And they tend to develop a more, more advanced theory of mind, you know, giving them more astute understanding of other people's motives. and of course intentions so a lot of what they do in pretend play is like taking a, a hypothesis hypothet <laughs> hypothesis okay and follow it out to the logical conclusion so what's interesting is that carol lewis was also a magician and also you can see that same ability to take a premise okay and to take it out to a more advanced or crazy conclusion. I really like this one. So Alice's adventures are full of surreal encounters that could help anyone exercise these skills. So Gopnik points out that there's some hallucinogenic no, hallucinogenic like drugs may also help you find or to get to the childlike childlike state of free association. But by reading you know any books, surely the safer way to turn back the clock and see the world from a new perspective. So as Carol also writes, okay, so many out of the way if, you know things had happened lately that Alice had begun to think that the very few things indeed were really impossible that's why she said so illusions brought on by drugs okay by lights and disease okay are giving us new perspectives new insights into the inner workings of our brain my best is Lewis Carroll accurately depicted some of the most common symptoms of the syndrome the Alice in Wonderland syndrome namely the feeling that one's body is larger or smaller than the other is usually a macro or micro which is means which means it's small macro is big so asomatognosia and objects appearing larger or smaller than ac they actually are are macro or micros micropsia 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 yeah <laughs> so, but patients have reported myriad like other symptoms you know hold on i will get something you know symptoms including the inability to perceive color or motion enhanced depth re perception okay and illusionary like movement and illusion that objects have been split vertically objects like appearing flattened or elongated objects appearing rotated 180 degrees or 90 degrees stuff like that and seeing multiple like images you know as if looking through an in in you know insects compound I yeah yeah so usually such symptoms okay are not long lasting
they usually are not long lasting usually this have disappearing within a few minutes or days stuff like that you know either spontaneously or like after treatment of underlying cause you know in cases of migraine stuff like that epilepsy stuff like that okay it may persist for years or even throughout the patient's lifetime so one or more of these individual symptoms are experienced more commonly in the general general population you know over one third of for example 297 adults something had experienced these kinds of symptoms you know, throughout their lifetime you know the distortions of like body image experience in alice in wonderland you know syndrome are usually consequences of some other other conditions you know and can be disorienting or perhaps like a little frightening but it's not really that otherwise you know harmless okay it's frightening of course okay especially if that's that's and you you just had it you, you know what i'm saying like yeah they can be however be a root cause rather than a consequence you know of other conditions and in some cases they may be like damaging or maybe life-threatening for example being have or or you're experiencing anorexia nervosa you know anorexia nervosa you know we do not really perceive the world as it really is rather you know the perception of the world is our brain's best guess at reality you know a neural construct built from the limited information it receives through our senses And this is also true of our bodies. So to the large extent, my best is, we perceive our body in the same way, you know, we perceive an object in the outside world, you know, through multiple channels of sensory information, okay, that enters our brain, our brain cells. So the sight of our body, as it moves, it's, you know, the sounds it makes, the touch, the pain, you know, it signals that arises, you know, from our skin, stuff like that came from our brain, you know, our muscle senses, internal sensations, stuff like that, if it touch a cold, the, the heat, you know, you know, consequently, like, interruptions in the stream of sensory information are disturbances in how okay we brain processes in how the brain processes these things okay it, and also it can alter some info information or perception in of our body so alice in wonderland syndrome being just one example of many so indeed my best is we do not perceive our body objectively we perceive it subjectively from the inside okay and then the end result of our bodily perception is what each of us calls me myself i arise all right my best is so i'm gonna add blush so Alice in Wonderland sim symptom, a uh, syndrome, symptoms. There, there are several symptoms of Alice in Wonderland sy syndrome. 
but none of them occur simul simultaneously so each symptom is separate okay and will not only like occur for a 5 to 20 minute period of time well unfortunately each of these symptoms can also be the result of a completely like different different issue so i am going to use this valentino by valentino this is our blush the micropsia in which objects appear smaller than normal okay Teleopsia, in which objects appear further away than they actually are. And also the macropsia, in which objects appear larger than they are. Larger than normal. <laughs> Why did they say larger than normal? And also metamorphopsia, in which straight lines appear wavy, warped, or, you know like blank stuff like that or pil pilopsia in which objects appear nearer than they actually are so some believe that hallucinations stuff like that time loss seizures are also part of this alice in wonderland syndrome all right so now we are going to add our highlighter this is for our highlighter so however others argue that these symptoms are instead generated from the original condition that causes alice in wonderland syndrome so alice in wonderland syndrome causes you know it occurs for such a short amount of time Which makes it difficult for doctors really to find the cause. Alright, so that's how we do it. This one will make your eyes brighter. So these are the direct causes of Alice in Wonderland syndrome. For example, you have head trauma, okay, migraines, infection, tumors, brain tumors, stuff like that. Okay, acute disseminated encephalomyelitis. Alice in Wonderland syndrome treatment you know there's no treatment for Alice in Wonderland treatment so the best way to treat this you know this condition is simply by helping the patient become more more comfortable That's how you deal with this kind. So my best is. So if the problem is caused by migraine, the treatment of the migraine itself may be the best way to elevate elevate Alice in Wonderland syndrome symptoms. Okay. Mm. Mm. So for example, migraine prophylaxis followed by a migraine diet is the most common attempt at treatment. But this fix, you know, may, may or may not help with AWS or Alice in Wonderland syndrome. Alice in Wonderland synd syndrome mainly occurs in children and in most cases goes away over, over time. Sometimes it goes away over time. Alright, my best is. So I am going to use this NARS eyeliner. 
for my brows. All right, my besties, I'm going to use this NARS for the eyebrows. It's colored blue. I don't have black, so just bear with me. <sighs> I can't find my, my mirror, so I'm just gonna use this one. I hope this one is okay. Let's try, let's try. Wow, that's it. Okay, I'm just gonna bring this blue down just a little bit, just right here. Hear that? Now that's cute. Alright, I'm gonna reveal to you the final makeup look. Hello my besties and amas. So this is the final makeup look. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit that like button. Alright. That bell notification. And also comment below. Share and subscribe. I will see you all next time. God bless you all. I love you, fam. I love you all. I love you. I love you so much. And thank you so much for watching.